Before I start this video, I want to take a moment to apologize for the last video's audio issues. For whatever reason, the output volume on my mic got maxed out, and by the time I had recorded it and heard it for the first time, it was too late. Trust me, I'm not going to take the time to go back and re-record audio for a Planetside 2 video at this point. It just isn't worth it. So, with that said, you should probably also know that this video is probably the last bit of Planetside 2 content I'm even remotely interested in doing for the channel at this point. The DX11 release did get me back interested in playing for maybe a little less than a month, but at this point all of the game's warts and flaws and developer incompetence has pushed me away to other less amateur titles. That and I'm fairly busy with real life stuff at the moment too. Besides the rehashing of the Nanoweave problem, there was a video I intended to do on population ethics, but this too ultimately seems to be a waste of time. So, I appreciate all the newer subs to the channel who are hungry for more content, but it probably isn't in the cards, at least in the short term, summer month. About a year and a half ago, I released a video on this channel entitled Remove Nanoweave. I feel as though I made the points I was trying to make at the time about the suit slot in and of itself, but a large portion of the video ended up meandering off the beaten path into stuff that I felt I really had to get out of the way if we were going to talk about game mechanics and altering them, or why altering them is the better way forward. To be clear, I'm not going to go back and rehash everything said in that video. I will uh, put a link in the description for you to go back and see it. But the purpose of this video is to try and more concisely lay out where my thinking on the subject has brought me in the time since that last video I did on it. So if you're looking for an in-depth discussion of Nanoweave and what it does, I'm not going to do that here. Go somewhere else for your textbook entry and definitions and values. I'm specifically making this video to dive a little bit deeper into the negative aspects the suit slot brings to what I've whittled down to three specific areas of gameplay. I'm not at all interested in having the beginner introduction guide to basic game mechanics and suit slots as I'm trying to have a little bit of a deeper dive discussion with people who already know what the hell's going on to an extent. And there are plenty of re other resources to do this, and nothing annoys me more than watching a video where some guy puts up a bunch of numbers and painstakingly reads them off to you. So, why rehash the conversation now? Well, I never really stopped trying to have the conversation, honestly, but the topic does come up from time to time, and the reactions to it and the idiotic shit I read and hear on the subject are quite bothersome. So there's that. In addition to this, I feel as though 2019 with the introduction of DX11 and further attempted real improvements to the game, maybe this is the year to deal with some long-standing legacy issues, Nanoweave Armor being one of them. Now keep in mind that I have absolutely no reason to believe any rework of the suit slot would be in any way better than it is now since the development team seems either incompetent or incapable of addressing actual problems with game mechanics. So this is why I have consistently asked for it just to be removed. Nothing they rework ever really has its core problems addressed. Alright, so as I mentioned earlier, I think at this point you can boil down the core problems with 20% reduction to small arms to three key areas. Uh, the first one being that Nanoweave adds unnecessary complexity and inconsistent health values from target to target in what is decidedly a multi-target game. Remember, players with Nanoweave will take two more shots to kill within maximum damage range. For some reason I keep reading from people that, oh, it's just one more bullet. Well, that, no, it isn't. Also remember that for the time being, I'm strictly talking about automatic weapons and not sniper rifles, battle rifles, and the rest of it. When it comes to complexity, we can really dig into this new player experience that everyone keeps pissing their pants over. I see people over and over again try to do everything but wipe a new player's ass, but when it comes to actual gameplay mechanics that ultimately don't do much else but negatively affect a new player's understanding of the game and ability to adapt to it, I hear crickets. Again, if we're going to be serious about addressing the new player experience, we first have to address the player experience in general. If you actually address people running around with multiple health values, which in this case is completely undiscernible from a regular target, the game will become less complex. That isn't necessarily a bad thing. Complexity for the sake of complexity is just stupid and does more to hurt retention rates than the draw for it will be. As for the point about inconsistent health values in this game, you have to remember that it is a numbers game, and when you actually improve at the gunplay aspect of the game, you begin to realize that your task becomes fighting multiple targets and simple inconsistencies like, oh hey, this guy randomly took two more bullets to kill, really can throw a wrench into the next target concept. 
In an ideal environment and playing perfectly, you'd never even have to consider Nanoweave a problem since it doesn't have any effect on headshots. More on this later. But that simply isn't the world or scenario you experience on the day-to-day -day fight to fight. The game and the fighting is chaotic, and you're going to be put in situations where the ultra-optimal method of dispatching standard players isn't available unless you're just going to eat a free death because you couldn't get a headshot kill. You shouldn't do that anyway. Another thing with this complexity issue, and this one is for the guys that try to minimize the impact of the suit slot and what it has on the game, most players have trash can tier aim, so yes, without question, two more bullets to kill someone is a major problem with poor aim. Time and time again, though, you see people who can't aim or who aim relatively poorly shilling for something that gets them killed way more often than it helps them. Again, I, as I mentioned in the last video, there's a constant and willful push by bad players against their own interests, and it's fairly comical. The number two core problem with Nano Weave armor is that it makes ranged combat with automatic weapons feel objectively awful, or just worse in general. This can give a player the distinct feeling that his or her weapon is ineffective, and this inevitably leads to using easier, more cancer methods of shooting people. Shotguns, snipers, C4, rocket primary, one-hit kill knife, etc. It essentially creates a very ranged compressed meta, along with the stillborn sense of base design the game comes with, of 15 meters and in viability, and then bolt, BR, cheese for everything else. Remember also that exposure time to one or two hit kill weapons while having to land 10 plus bullets to kill for an average player is going to lead them towards a feeling of weapon ineffectiveness or weakness. I don't think I really have to go into too much detail here as it's fairly straightforward. Most players have poor aim. Poor aim players uses a weapon that requires a poor aim player using a weapon that requires 10 plus bullets to kill at any range outside of 15 meters. They're going to struggle. The poor aim player puts down that weapon and switches to something perceivably easier and more effective. And I'm sorry, Rel, but it's never another automatic, so thanks for the laughably stupid drop-off changes that you've never reverted. It happens to be a sniper rifle. Repeat this hundreds of times over for the number of bad players in the game, and then wonder why every fight has 15 bolt babies shitting it up. It really isn't that hard to figure out. The third core problem with Nanoweave Armor is that it adds to a rather bloated skill gap through headshot effectiveness versus body shot effectiveness. Here we are again, back to the new player experience bullshit. So first off, I'm not saying that the skill gap in the game should be severely altered. Removing Nanoweave and slightly reducing what is a pretty hilarious skill gap is the good player's compromise towards addressing whatever issue there is here. You'll hear morons out there ask for a reduced headshot multiplier, and I've seen some suggest 1.3 as the multiplier, and I really can't overstate how fucking awful that would be for the game. That, my friends, is basically destroying whatever skill gap we have in the game now. If you choose to address the gunplay skill gap, I feel like you have to look at an obvious culprit, and there is no more obvious culprit than a suit slot that has a player facing shooting someone four times in the head or nine times in the body. It's a no-brainer. So with all that said, what does removing Nanoweave potentially solve? Number one, it removes unnecessary complexity and inconsistent health values from target to target, besides heavy, max, and auxiliary shield, but that's a topic for another video that I will never do. Number two, it improves the feeling and effectiveness of ranged combat with automatic weapons. Potentially adds more viability to certain weapons, more specifically the lower rate of fire, higher bloom per shot weapons. And number three, it improves on some long-standing skill gap bloat while still maintaining a healthy skill gap via skilled gameplay action. This is the good player's compromise. What removing Nanoweave doesn't do? It doesn't drastically alter the time to kill, this is fake news. The game will still have almost double the time to kill and bullets to kill of any other popular shooter game. So no, changing a bullet to kill from 9 to 7 doesn't magically turn the game into a Twitch shooter that some morons will have you believe. 